sup guys welcome to another video in this one I'm going to set up uh, for us to be able to shoot uh, another player and basically take uh, health from them um, so as I said in the last video it's going to work with variables that is what I'm, that's what I'm gonna do so I'm gonna start by opening the third person character and creating a, a new variable called health uh, this variable is going to hold the health of the players and I'm going to make this a float I'm going to compile and I'm just going to put the default value of 100 and to make this replicate to, uh, you have to remember over here in replication is going to be default to none so I'm just going to say and click replicate it replicate it basically means that this variable will be um, will be networked uh, I mean it will be shared over the network and rep notify is the same thing as replicated but uh, just to show you you get a little uh, function here that automatically creates on rep health so every time this variable is replicated um, uh, it's gonna fire this function so I'm gonna tell you when variables are replicated so the variables are replicated when um, for example a new player enters the level and is gonna get every information uh, that is replicated over the network is going to request it so this uh, function will fire and the value will, the value will be shared or when you set this value or change it it's going to be replicated uh, the same way so this this function will fire the same thing uh, so basically you can just go over here and put some code there you basically will use this imagine if you are um, like I don't know uh, you are for example an item and uh, like uh, some games support opt join, but the thing with opt join in middle of the games is that uh, imagine if you are a player and go to the level and pick that item up, you will destroy it and have it in your inventory. If a new player comes in, uh, the level is going to be, um, uh, you know, is going to be as the start. So the, the item is going to be there uh, even if the a player had picked before because the player didn't exist on the server, you will not get information before, so you wouldn't know. So what this wrap is going to be is if, if you have, for example, a, a variable called, called I don't know, uh, is used or is picked up, uh, and you set that to true, we need to get the variable, and that's true. You basically create a branch here and say, well, if if this user this item has been picked up, I'm just going to destroy it. So the player, when this information is passed to him, he enters the level. Uh, the variable will be passed through because it's replicated, and if it's true, it will destroy itself. Um, if you don't use this, even if it's replicated, uh, the item will be in the level when uh, it's not because a player has picked up before. I hope that's somewhat clear to you. Uh, again, as I said in the last video, explaining replication with words is difficult, but um, you know, I'm doing my best. So if you delete the function, uh, it will become normally replicated. Just make sure it is. And now what we're going to do is just going to create a little fire system uh, as I did in the other series. Basically I'm going to fire a line trace and check if we read something in with that line. If we do, we're going to apply damage to that. So the first thing I'm going to tell you is um, I'm going to right click and create a new custom event and I'm just going to call it client um, fire. And I'm going to replicate this uh, event to only client because uh, the line trace it will only exist on the client itself and it will check it's going to be checked by the client uh, the server uh, cannot fire line traces I believe we can't but then you anyhow uh, it's best that you do it on the only client and we we'll only tell the server to apply damage if we eat something Bec uh, otherwise it it's not important to be using net width to uh, make the server check for uh, fire if it, we don't read anything we are just wasting uh, internet. So let's just drag from here and say line trace by channel. And the uh, way we do this is that we get the camera, uh, we get its role location, and we're gonna plug that into the start. And we want to get its forward vector. This is basically get. Um, uh, we're going to get the x value of this, basically the x in Unreal is the front of uh, an object. We're going to get the forward vector, basically we're going to get um, that x, um, x direction, but just with one unit. And we are going to multiply this by the distance we want. 
So if I say through through uh, I don't know 300, we're gonna fire a line with three meters. But because uh, it's a shot, I'm gonna make it uh, a big like 30,000. Doesn't really matter. Uh, just make sure this value is like bigger than a thousand. And then we are just going to add these two up. Basically, this will make this line uh, basically start at the world location of the camera. So we want to fire from our camera and just plug that into the hand. The rest here you can leave all the same. I'm just going to drag the bug for duration so we can see where are we shooting. Then you can see we have a out hit. We can break this and get information about uh, what we hit. And this return value will say did we hit anything or not. But we are going to most likely be hitting because the line trace is very big and we will always hit a static object or something. So from the hit actor, well we want to know if we hit another character. So I'm just going to drag from this and cast to character. Uh, connect this up. And now the way this works is if we hit a character, the cast will be true or success and it's going to trigger this. If we hit for example a static mesh, so it's not going to be a character and it's going to fail the cast. So what we're going to do here, um, I'm going to create another custom event. And here we're going to say, well, server apply damage. So what do we want to do here? We want to replicate it to the server because uh, only the server can apply damage or directly, you know, change variables. Uh, it always have to be executing on the server. And I'm going to call this node called apply damage. It's default by Unreal. And you're going to see this little symbol here. This symbol means if you fire this node on a client, uh, this won't work. If you are on a multiplayer game, uh, firing this on the client won't work. Because only the server has authorization to apply damage to actors. So I'm just going to drag this uh, and create a new input bit to the dam damage actor and the base damage and the damage causer uh, I'm going to create a pin as well. And you don't need anything else. So just go over here from the cast and say, well, server, apply damage. The damage vector is going to be the character uh, if we hit it. The base damage can be, uh, let's say, I don't know, 50. So we can kill a character with two shots. And the damage causer is going to be ourselves. In this way, uh, we can now shoot and kill um, characters. I mean, kill, we can't, we just can reduce the value from this health variable. Uh, but now we want to know, well, mid game, what this variable is. So instead of doing a player name tag, um, I've showed that in the last video. Uh, so I'm probably just going to set uh, this to be. Uh, the health instead of being the its player name. So what I can do here is I'm going to disconnect this so we don't uh, set the name and I'm just going to get our event tick because remember we want to uh, because we like might be uh, changing health uh, most of the time we want to check if that health changes or updating the health values all the time. So the same concept is going to be applied uh, like it's the name. So I'm just going to just drag to here, control C and control V. Um, I'm going to place it up here. And I'm just going to get a custom event. And I'm going to call client update health. So I'm going to use this. It's going to replicate on the owning client because we want to um, uh, do the same thing as we did the names. I explained it in the last video. So I'm going to connect that up. And I'm just going to call that over here. Client update health. And the way we want to do this is that we want to get the player name uh, from our array element. And then we want to set the text on it. And we want to set the text to the health variable. And that is made by getting the health. As you can see, you have the little um, balls here that signalize that this variable is replicated. So it will be uh, updating in the network. So this should work fine. So let's just play and see what happens. 
uh, let me just make sure that I have two, three players. Okay, that's fine. So we can see that the text now says that we all have a hundred health. So I'm gonna go to this guy here on the left, and I'm firing. Okay, I'm meeting myself. Um, wait. Oh no, I created the um, the event, but um. I never trigger that, so we're gonna have to. It's very easy. Let's just I don't know. Can be over here. Just press left mouse button, and if we press the left mouse button, we're just gonna say client fire. So this way we can fire the array. And just for convenience, to be easier to shoot, um, I'm just going to pick up this camera. I'm going to. Actually, no. I'm gonna go to the camera. Boom. I'm going to drag it into the mesh over, over here on the components. I'm going to go to the parent socket, find the head, and then I'm going to reset um, the location. I'm going to go to the camera boom and say set the target arm length to 0 0.01. So we're basically inside the head. I'm going to drag this a little bit forward like that. And I'm going to say um, over here on the character select the entire character and use controller rotation yaw take that in and we basically have a little uh, first person character that we can rotate and now it will be easier to fire so what you can see now I'm going to fire against this character on the left wait it's hitting the wall why am I not hitting the character Wait, what? Now that's very weird. Let me just go into one of the clients. Okay, um, I think m it might be a problem. Go inside the event graph. Um, on the line trace, we're gonna have a trace uh, channel. Uh, switch that to camera. Now let's go into the mesh. We're gonna have something that has to do with collisions here. Uh, collision presets and we need to be blocking the camera because uh, on visibility that's where it was it's ignoring so we need to set that to camera so we can block it and it will make the line trace collide with the character so if we try that I think I already hit it oh that's very interesting And I forgot something very... I'm so stupid, I apologize. Uh, the, w the code is all working, but I forgot to set up one last event. That is on um, receive damage or damaged. Let me see. Event any damage. Just type in event any damage. I did everything, but I forgot to, uh, you know, subtract the damage and make it so we lose um, health, basically. So let's create a new custom event. Actually, I don't think we need because this will be firing on the server, as you can see here. So you can just go to this damage, um, get the health, do a health minus the damage we received, and then set the health to that value. And I believe with this, we will be able to subtract elf from uh, the characters I'm sorry I forgot this I never remember to do it but again now you can see that I fired when I uh, spawned now he has 50 health I'm gonna fire at uh, against the guy in the back now he has 50 health and now if I switch oh now he has zero because I shot again and now he's mi minus 50 the server is a hundred and now if I go back and watch it, the server, you can see that he is minus 50. And he has 50, he has 100. So now I'm going to shoot the server just to see if it's replicating correctly. And if I now with the client look at the server, he has 50. So now you can see you have an L variable working. And that's basically how you uh, replicate variables. Uh, the most important thing is when you set a variable, on the multiplayer game, it always has to trigger uh, on an event that is replica executing on the server, never to an unknown client. If you don't go an unknown client, it won't replicate over to other clients that are connected to the server. And remember, these events 
or this note that is symbol over here, meaning that they will only execute on the server. And for example, here you can see that I didn't create a, a new custom event on the server to do this because this node is uh, by default executing on the server. And now, just for a last thing, I'm going to check if this uh, is uh, oh sorry if this is minus or equal to zero, and if it's true. Um, I am going to destroy the actor. And remember, when you destroy actors, uh, when you destroy actors, or um, uh, when you destroy actors, or do something uh, that you want to be visible in to all the players, you need to make them on servers like you do the variables. It has to be that way, otherwise it won't replicate. So, like in your screen, it will destroy, but on other screen, it won't. Uh, because uh, if you do things locally, it won't get replicated. It needs to be the server. It's very important. Uh, so if you run this now, if I shoot down someone, I'm going to shoot the guy in the back. He disappears on the server. If I go over to the client, he's not there. And now I should have a third screen. And I can't move or anything because he got destroyed. This will be the point where you would spawn a new character in another place and make this controller of the client one possess that character. So you can keep playing or you display a game over screen and you go to a spectator mode or something. Um, but this is the basics of how to replicate variables and basically shooting someone, extract health and you know. This little thing as we did as the names, we can now um, display our health currently to uh, all the players. Uh, so yeah, I hope you guys understood um, the basics of this. It's very hard to explain, but uh, write in the comments if you have any doubts. I'll try to explain it any other way or something like that. Any, any wa oh, oh my god, my English. Um, thanks to, thank you so much for watching. In the next video, I'm not sure what I'm going to do, but... Um, well, actually, I'm going to make sure I create a respawn system. So you can have a look at how to possess a character and, you know, replicate it and everything. It should be using the same concept as this, like executing on the server should be fine. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye bye.